God's word is the light of life. It is powerful. It's the glory and truth for our spirit. Open your heart and mind as you receive truth and inspiration of God's word that will change your life forever. As God's servant, Pastor Chooks Etty, the lead pastor of Doxa Life International Church, leads you into a life of limitless possibilities. The impact. But I don't know if, we're, if we'll be able to... You may be seated. Where I want you to stand up, you can stand. I'll, I'll make you to... I'll ask you to stand. And I would like you to pay attention. And I want you to pay attention. You see, one of the reasons why believers struggle to read and to or to study the word of God is because they don't know the importance or they don't understand the impact of the word of God on their lives. So I'm going to be sharing with us the impact of God's word on these three compartments of your of us spirit soul and what and i want you to know that the word of god has an impact it can impact your body it can impact your soul it can impact your spirit for the brevity of time i think we may be able to take only the impact of the body, in, impact of the word on our body. But can I, I can assure you that the word of God can change your soul, can change your mindset, can turn, you know, somebody that is being looked at as Olodo and Otondo, can embrace the word of God, and the word of God will move you from the back side of life to the front side of life. Am I communicating? Come on, am I communicating? So the word of God has that capacity. If it is for our soul, you know, the soul is the seat of your mind, your emotion, your intellect. The word of God can transform that. You know, but maybe we're going to go into details when we start looking at the soul. You know, oftentimes. times... If it is your emotion, you know, there are people who say, look, this is the way I am. See, if, if I boil now, eh, it can fry and roast anything. Anyway, you say, oh, that is the way God made me. That's not the way God made you. It's demonic. And if you don't call it the name it is, that thing might send you to hell. Because it might make you to kill yourself or kill somebody. Are we together? Come on, are we together? So you say, oh, maybe people have called you Otondo and all that. But I can assure you the word of God can transform your life. We're going to go into that very in, in a detailed way. But let me give you an example. You know, the late Miles Monroe, I, I'll never forget, I watched one of his messages And he shared the testimony of how the word of God moved him from the back side of his class. Turned him from an otundu to a celebrity. You know, he grew up, he's from Bahamas. And he grew up during the apartheid uh, era. And he was an F student. He was an F student. He wasn't doing well. And then his class teacher, Mr. Scott or something, looked at him and said, you will never amount to anything. He said, he said you are black monkeys. He said, you will never amount to anything. Because he was coming first from behind. And he cried. You know, he... That affected his self-esteem and all that. And he went home to his mom and asked the mom, is it true that we are black monkeys? Is it true that I will never amount to anything in life? Oh, thank God for godly mothers. Thank God for godly parents. And that is why, you see, 
Especially for those of you who are not yet married, you have an advantage. Eh? Are you listening to me? Those of you who are not yet married, you have what? An advantage. You know, motherhood is a calling. Eh? Are you aware? That motherhood is what? Is an office. Motherhood is not just something because you are breastfeeding a baby. You're a mother. Eh? Maybe there are some people who are breastfeeding. They are not mothers. They are murderers. Okay, say how? Okay. If somebody who is supposed to be a mother can tell a, a daughter, say, use what you have to get... <laughs> is that a mother? Who is that person? A mother. <laughs> you, you got it? Come on, you got it? Did you get what I was... You got it? Okay. So, you see, don't just assume, oh, that what makes you a mother is because you are breastfeeding a child. It's possible you are a murderer. And also don't think that, that what makes you a wife is because you came to the altar and they say, take care thou. <laughs> you say, yes, I do. It's possible you are not a wife, you are a knife. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay. Are we together? So, you see, thank God for godly mothers. Because that's what took us to that detour. You know, what she did was to carry, said, my boy, sit down. And then she opened the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. And read it to that young man. He said, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think. According to the power that does what? You know, that's another message altogether. Where is the, where is the power? Where is the power? Come on, if you're a child of God, where is the power? But most of you are saying, send them power. No wonder nothing has happened to you. Okay, let's leave that for another day. Now, but you see, that thing changed my morose mentality. He began to meditate on the word of God. He began to meditate on the word of God. And all of a sudden, he moved from the back side of his class to the front side of his class. And the rest, they say, is what? History. We'll talk more about that when we begin to talk about the effect on the soul. But today we're going to be looking at the effect of the word of God. The impact. That's what we mean by the effect. The impact of the word of God on your body. Come on. Do you know that the word of God can affect your body? Are you aware? Eh? You are not aware? Okay. And you're going to be aware today. You know, knowledge has a way of transforming and by the way, somebody is going to be healed today. Okay. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. You know, the impact of the word of God. A young man who has been a cold boy, an alcoholic for years. In fact, all the periods that I've seen him, he looks like a mad person. He looks like a madman. And just a few weeks, okay, just, I think last week or so, either last week or two weeks ago, he just called me from the blues. I never knew that my number I gave him since that he I don't know how, how he managed to keep down my number. I think I gave him that number maybe many years ago. Called me from the blues. His voice was sounding differently. He said, look, I'm changed now. 
He said, look, he said this, that he said, I, now I know that encountering Jesus is real. That when people talk about having an encounter, he said, I've been changed. I said, I can hear that in your voice. He said, he said wait until you see me. <laughs> he said, you think you are, you think, I, no, you, are, you have not seen any change. I said, I can see the change in your voice. I know it's a wrong English. Don't analyze. He said, how can you see the... <laughs> so before you begin to write it down, and I said, Kai, this pastor is releasing missiles. I'm aware. But I'm just trying to give you the gravity of... <laughs> He said, no, you, don't, you have not seen it. See, when you, when you see me, he said, should I come? I said, I just sh show or disappear. Just appear in my office now. And by the time I saw him, I didn't believe what I was seeing. He was glowing. Flesh. I said, you mean you are this handsome like this? <laughs> You mean you are fine like this? Ah. And I called somebody to come and see him. In fact, people, it, ordinarily, if, if they didn't tell you that this happens to be the same person, you will not believe. Candy. Am I communicating? <laughs> I just said, I said, no, it's not only my eyes. I'm not the only one that, I said, Sam, come, come and see. <laughs> come and see what I'm seeing. You see, the word of God has the capacity. Now, let's read. I told you I was going to ask you to stand up again. Now, can you rise up on your feet with me? Let's read. Can we read it together? I want to go. Now, can we read it again? Are you seeing something there? Read it again. It's quick. Now, do you realize something? Before I go to the what the word of God is quick. Can you do you realize that? In that place, it shows us that the word of God has the capacity to affect your spirit, affect your soul, affect your body. Thank God we have one doctor here. Joints and marrow. Is it, where is it? Did you see that? He said the word of God is what? Quick. The word of God is alive. Now, let's read simpler translation. Give us a message. Let's see. Come on, quick. I hope the person is not sleeping. Thank you. Let's read it together. I want to go. Okay, give us another one. Amplify. Did you, did you see that? The word of God is what? Come on, let me hear you again. Energizing and effective. It is sharper than any two. The word of God is sweet. You know, I, I thought we were going to have time. There were some, some scriptures I, I was reading in my living Bible. I said, Kai, I need, I need to read these scriptures. <laughs> eh? 
Oh, my God. He said the word of God is living. <laughs> is any other, any, do you have any other translation there? I have my living Bible. Don't worry. You know, somebody was saying, somebody saw this is my living Bible. He said, Kai, this is my living Bible. is his own. I said, it's a lie. It's my own. <laughs> and I said, look, if I give you this living Bible, the church will sack me. <laughs> Where will I tell them that my living Bible went to? <laughs> NIV, I like it. That's, that's, I read NIV. Let's read it together. Attitude. If you don't have a Bible, I feel sorry for you. And if you don't read your Bible, you are like the same. You are, there's no difference between you and the person who doesn't have a Bible. You know, there's something they say that if you, if, if you can read and you don't read, there's no difference between you and the person who can't read. Huh? Do you, okay, you may be seated. It's time for my living Bible. <laughs> he said, for whatsoever God says to us is full of living power. It is sharper than the sharpest dagger. I, I wish that that Vikings people will know this. I wish that black ass people will know this. <laughs> that they don't need any axe. All they need is the word of God. <laughs> he said it's sharper than any what? Any dagger. <laughs> oh, glory to God. He said cutting swift and deep into our innermost thoughts and desires with all their parts exposing us for what we really are. You see, the word of God can just, first of all, it can tell you who you are. It can also reveal who you are. Now, the, the purpose of this is you see, because one of the reasons why people don't study the word of God is because they don't know the efficacy of the word of God. Are we, are we, are we together? Come on, are we together? They don't know the potency of the word. The word of God is potent. The word of God is quick. The Bible says it is alive and powerful. The other translation said it is full of power. And it tells us that it has the capacity to impact your spirit. It has the capacity to impact your soul. It has the capacity to impact your body. And today we're going to be looking at how it impacts our body. You see, the word of God can turn a sickler to a healing evangelist. And that's what God has been doing. Most of the people you see that carried tremendous healing anointing were people that were giving up for death. Somebody like Kelly Hagin was told that he had few more weeks to live. And he said, look, if I have few more weeks to live, I think I, should, I want to die reading the word of God. And right there, where he was isolated, he kept eating, drinking, reading, and meditating on the word of God. He lived to be 89 years old. And not just that he lived to be 89 years old, he became somebody that God was using to mesmerize sickness. So the word of God has the power, has the potency, has the capacity to affect your body. Yeah. 
you ask Moses. Moses, you know, oftentimes we say it's good. We talk about the presence of God. But this, the truth is this. The word of God is God. So the word of God could also be termed as the presence of God. Because when Moses went to the mountain, what was being released was, was the word of God. Are we together? Come on, are we together? And now the Bible says that by the time he came back, his face was glowing. You know, the glory of God that Moses carried was such that when Moses was, even at 120, the Bible says his natural form was not abated. That means he didn't bend like an old man. And he said, the Bible says his eyes was, didn't go dim. At 120, he was still reading and seeing without glasses. Because of the word of God. God's word can reconfigure your body. <laughs> Did somebody hear me? I said, God's word can do what? It can reconfigure your body. It's possible they have told you, or they told you, you have this chronic, whatever name they call it. But I can assure you, the word of God has the capacity to reconfigure it. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. You see, we must change our approach to the word of God. You know, the, the reason is this. The reason, when we want to read the word, we are reading the word like a religious thing. They said, I must read my Bible. But you don't know that you are face to face with the glory of God. Each time you are studying your Bible, each time you are listening to the word of God, you are face to face with the glory of God. You know, oftentimes when people come to church, they are waiting. They say, talk and come and, and demonstrate. No, sir. You don't know that you are, when the word of God is coming, you are face to face with the glory of God. And the Bible says, as we behold him, like in the mirror, he said, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. We are changed into the same image. We are changed, we are transformed, we are metamorphosed into the same image from glory to glory. Jesus speaking. He said, the words that I speak to you, he said, they are spirit and they are life. So that means each time you are coming in contact with the word of God, each time the word of God is coming to you, spirit is entering you. Life is entering you. He said, the word of God is alive. That is if you open up to it. Now take us to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. 20 to 22. Proverbs chapter 4. He said, my son, attend to my words. This is wisdom. This is God speaking. Who is God talking to? Who? Who? He said, my son, attend to my words. Incline thy ears unto my what? Now, hear what he says. Why you need to do that? He said, let them not depart from your what? From your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your what? 22. For they are what? To, to which people? To everybody, to everybody, to those that find them, and they are what? He 
He said, my son, attend to my word. Incline your ears to my saying. He said, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Now, let me tell you this. You see, somebody say, I, I can't meditate. I don't know how to meditate. But do you know how to worry? How many of you know how to worry? You have ever worried in your life? Can I see your hand? You have not worried in your life. People must be spirit too. Yeah. You, have, you have never worried in your life. Can I see your hand? You have never worried in your life. So, if you can worry, you can meditate. <laughs> you know, the difference between worrying and meditation is the content of your worrying. <laughs> Please, leave my grammar for me, okay? <laughs> Is the what? <laughs> when they say differentiate between worrying and meditation, just let them know it's the content of your worrying. <laughs> some people are worrying about their problems and some people are worrying about God. They, they, just, they, just, they just sit down. They don't have money in their pocket and they are meditating. God said, I will lend to nations. You see, <laughs> you're, you're just meditating, thinking. He said, silver and gold are mine. He said, that's my father talking. Oh my God. My father said, silver and gold are mine. Now, that's the person worrying about God. And that's this other person counting silly. And I say, oh, nobody likes me. All my uncles have gone to Lagos. I've gone to... <laughs> I've met Pastor. I've met uh, Uncle Timothy. <laughs> I've met uh, Auntie Angelina. All these people, they are wicked people. They have that money. They don't want to give me. Oh. Continue. <laughs> you see, and another person is meditating. In nothing shall I be ashamed. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? The one other person is meditating. He said, I have set the Lord before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. You see him come out. He is bouncing. He is bouncing. You are, you are wondering, this is like this person doesn't have a problem. No, he, he has learned how to cast his cares on him, for he cares for him. Anyway, just in case you don't know, maybe by the time we get deeper, do you know, you don't even know that worrying is affecting your health. You see, you are getting older than your age. It just, oh. <laughs> you say, you say, look, eh? Let me, if I don't keep my face like this, <laughs> there, nobody will answer me. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Eh? One of the things you must understand: if God does not touch anybody to help you, if you like, squeeze your face like some paper. Nobody will help you. <laughs> he said, my son, attend to my word. Pay attention. Leave Facebook. Pay attention. <laughs> what my word will give to you. Face, paper, Facebook. It won't, it won't give you. He said, attend to my word. 
incline your words, your ears to my saying. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Hey, keep them in your eyes. Read them, read them, keep reading. And then put them in the midst of your heart. He said, for they are life. Can you imagine? Did you remember Hebrews chapter 4? He said, the word of God is quick. The word of God is alive. The word of God is alive. The word of God is alive. They are alive to those that find them. They are held to their bodies. Oh, I like him this. Now, give us Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Come on, go ahead. Quickly, quickly, quickly. He said, your words were found. And I did eat them. Hiya. <laughs> the word of God is food. And you see, you are what you eat. Some of you, you are eating junk. You're, what you are eating? You are eating Buhari Kiyu Shagari. This one, ki, oh, Chine Keme. <laughs> you know what is producing in you? Fear. You say, nobody knows tomorrow. Who no knows? Who is next? They kill 20 people here. They kill. No, everybody can be killed, though. You are wasting your time. It's not everybody that is killable. <laughs> and you're wondering who are those people. I'm one of them. <laughs> okay. He said, Your words were found. You see, you have to look for it. This way you are going, it will not help you. It will, it. Jesus, help us. And I did eat them. Thy words were unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. You know, we're, we're going to talk about this when we begin to talk about the impact on your soul. Now, but I just want to, now hear this. You can use the word of God to paralyze sickness, to disable sickness in your body. God wants you healthy. God wants you bouncing in health and vitality. And that's one of the reasons he gave you his word. He gave you his word for your advantage. He said they are health. Now, take us back to that Proverbs chapter 14, verse 22. Give us several translations. Give us several translations. You see, Third John chapter 1, verse 2. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. God wants you to be healthy. And just to recap, okay, you have put it. He said, dear friend, listen well to my words. Tune your ears to my voice. Tune it. Tune it away from, from listening to Nyama Nyama. Tune it. Tune it. How many of you have ever tuned something before? Eh? You have tuned. You know, tuned. Okay, just in case you are not born in the era of the real tuning. <laughs> you may not understand. You know the real tuning? Do it like this. It's the same thing as remote. Remote. Pim, pim. You are doing what? You are tuning. You are tuning. But there is this other tuning they tune in this way. Tune. When you are tuning, you hear shh. You tune again, you hear. You'll be hearing shh and some voices. Until you tune to the right frequency. Now, now, can I tell you this? You see, God is always speaking. <laughs> but the problem is that many people have not tuned you say, is it this one? I should do it like this. No, he's not talking about this, your physical ear. 
there is an inner ear. You tune it. You will hear God. Because he's always, he speaks. Tune your ears to my voice. And what happens? Go ahead. Go ahead. Quick, 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 quick. Keep my message in plain view. At how many times? All times. Concentrate. Learn it by what? Oh. Learn it by what? By heart. Or what they call, how do they put it in Nigerian English? Of, they say off head. <laughs> they say, learn it off head. That means your head should be off. If your head is off, where would the thing now be? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, now, 22. Those who discover these words live. Really what? Body and soul, they are bursting with health. Hey, you, you didn't read this thing. Are you excited seeing this thing? Come, can we read it together? He said, those, how many people... How many people? Every, every Christian. They are all the Christians. Those who discover these words, they live. And he now took the living to another level again. Really live. Body, soul, they are bursting with health. Hey. You see, the word of God can make you Send sickness to to where? Eh? Eh? And, and somebody said, now, if everybody is walking in this dimension, what will doctors eat? That's not your business. He <laughs> said, God knows how to take care of them. Just walk in. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I don't want to be a specimen. <laughs> so I choose to embrace the word of God. <laughs> now, let me tell you, when I was growing up, huh? Did you, did you hear from doctor herself? In fact, we have two doctors in the house this night. He said it's in order. Because many sicknesses are what? Are, did, you, did you hear that? Hey, I don't want to be a prayer point. They are carrying me up and down. <laughs> so, you see, you're going to be, I wish you have all the time. You see, why I'm saying we need to understand why we need to take seriously our walk with God, our relationship with the world. I used to be very sickly. In fact, once it is during Hamatan, cold weather, there's no way that I will not be in the hospital. Related to so many things. <laughs> but by that I began to eat. You are what you eat. You, you saw that eat. The word were found. Eat. We'll go back to that scripture reading from other translations. I ate it. You know, some of some people found the word, they didn't eat it. Eh? The food you looked at. How will he profit you? Eh? Eh? Will he profit you? It won't. It, we, I found it. It's not enough to find it. You must do what? You must do what? Eat it. Some of you, you have found the word, but you have not, you have refused to eat it. 
You say, mm, but mm, this thing. Mm -hmm. The word of God can affect your health. It can. It can make you live in health, you know, in, in health and vitality. Hey. Let me show you the realm of do we have some Zionites here? Eh? We, do we have people from Zion? Or we have people from Otonkom? Or you, <laughs> you have people from Itim? <laughs> They're wondering where is Itim? That's my, that's my native, you know, place of nativ natural nativity, okay? That's the only village that is in the dictionary. Item. That is Itim. <laughs> now, but see, let me tell you where I am from. Isaiah 33. Isaiah 33. You know, I, I like us reading the word of God. If you are coming to church without a Bible, without a writing material, I'm wondering what you are coming for. Or you, you are, thou shalt not trust your brain. The ugliest pencil is sharper than the sharpest memory. Isaiah 33, we read from 20. What's happening? So, okay, I think I'm, I'm just going. He said, take a look at, no, don't be in a hurry to go to another translation. But he said, take a look at Zion. Will you? Oh, give us King James. We'll come back to this easy King James, quickly. He said, look upon Zion, the city of your solemnities, that I shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed. No wonder the Bible says, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. Now, neither shall any of the cause thereof be broken. 21. 21. But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of what? Broad rivers and streams wherein shall go no galley with ox, neither shall gallant sheep pass thereby. Now, a translation says that enemies will not be able to assess because the place is a broad river, okay? Enemy is also sickness. Now, go, 22. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. 23. Thy tacklings are loosed. They could not wear strength in their mast. They could not spread the cell. Then is a pre of a great spoil divided. The lamb take, the lame take the pre. Okay, 24. This is where we're going. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. Have you ever read this before? Eh? Come on, have you ever read that before? God said that the people who Zionites will not say, I am what? <laughs> he said, oh, what should I not say? <laughs> so why are you sick? You see, it is not compulsory to be sick. Sickness is an option. You decide to be sick. You see, you say how? I, I'll, re, I'll show you. James, they say, is, is any among you sick? That is, it's not compulsory, but he's asking. 
just in case, is any among you what? So it's not compulsory. You see, you see, your one of the things that will make the word of God to affect your body is when what God says comes to you as a revelation. What I want to say now, they say I shouldn't be saying it. <laughs> but how can I not say it? Glory to God. <laughs> Come on, glory! He said, dead are staying in Zion. They will not say I'm sick. And Hebrews, Apostle Paul said, he said, we have come to Mount Zion. We have come to Mount Zion. We have come to Mount Zion. So that is where we live. For the word of God to affect your body, it's something that must come to you as a revelation. You must, you must receive it for it to impact Act your body. See, I'm telling you the truth. The people might say that you are not fine. I'm telling you, there is a way you meditate on the word of God if your face begins to glow. God's word can affect your body. The Bible says there was no feeble amongst them. There was no feeble. This is the covenant in the Old Testament could produce a result that among close to one million Jews, there was no feeble among them. And we are in a better covenant. And if the people who were in the, um, the Old Covenant walked and they said there was no feeble among them, I can tell you, we are in a better covenant that, that we can still say that we can walk in the realm that there won't be any feebleness amongst us. But it is, it is you according to your eating. It is to you according to your what? You are what you what? You eat. Some are eating junks. Some are not eating neither junk or anything. So we have come to Zion. That is our address. That is our location. Now let's let's read that Hebrews twelve. I think Hebrews chapter twelve. Hebrews chapter 12. Hey, I wish we can read from verse 18, but for the want of time, the Bible says, but ye are come unto man Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly 
glory. <laughs> and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to the God, the judge of all, to the spirit of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel, that speaketh better things than the blood of the people they said that my great grandfather killed. There is a blood that is speaking for me. And, and you see, because of this blood that is speaking for me, that is why I know that no generational curse has any power over me. Because I d- I've left that place. I'm not there. Because when I gave my life to Christ, the Bible says, he translated me. He moved me from the power, dominion of darkness. There was a transplanting to the kingdom of his love son. So I am not where demons can reach me. I am not where, <laughs> oh my God. I am not where, where incantations. I'm telling you. But it needs to come to you as a revelation. You see, that was one of the things that, oh, no problem. I think maybe by Sunday we're going to start that, that realm. That, that God told us, he said, look unto Abraham, your father. Look unto Abraham, your father. You must know whose you are and who you are. You must know whose you are and who you are. They brought Balaam to curse the Israelites. <laughs> and as a sacrifice and sacrifice, he opened his mouth to a curse. Blessings started flowing. And the people didn't know. They were not binding and losing. They didn't even know that something was happening. And Balaam said, and said, he said no enchantment. No definition. Against Jacob that will prosper. And he said, look, he said, let me die the death of the righteous. What a, what a fantastic cousin. He said, these people are a people separate. God's word can affect your body. God's word can bring back something, anything that is dead in your body. The word of God can quicken it. The Bible says the word of God is alive. Now, somebody understood that in the word. The centurion, the centurion met Jesus and said, look, come and heal. My servant is sick. He said, my servant is sick. And Jesus said, look, okay, I'm going to your house. Centurion, a man of revelation. A man of revelation. If it were to be you, this is Jesus. You know, some people in the church, until pastor has laid hands on them, they don't believe anything has happened to them. Some people in the church, until they have fallen and scattered the chairs, they will not believe that anointing has moved that day. And here was a man, Jesus said, I'm coming to your house. The man said, Jesus, <laughs> I am not worthy for you to come to my house. He said, look, don't bother. He said, you see, I have a revelation. I am a man under authority. And I have people under me. And I tell this one to go and they go. I tell this one to come and they come. And I know you're a man of authority. You don't need to come. Send your word. Hey. This is Jesus alive. You know, so, you know some people say, touch my head, touch my head. <laughs> you don't need, what you need is the laying of the word. The laying of the word. He said, send your word. Hey, Jesus said, I come and hint to this type of faith. Okay, just, you won't find it in the dictionary. Okay. You can meet me after, I'll tell you what the meaning <laughs> Okay, just in case you are wondering the language I spoke, I spoke English. That is English and Igbo. 
Akama Hintu. <laughs> Akama Hintu, that type of faith. That's English. English Igbo now. He said, he said, your, your, your servant, go home, is done. And when the man inquired, the, he was told it was the same. And I, you know, that man is something else. I'm sure when Jesus said, say it's done, he looked at his time. Yeah, he, said, this, he said this thing by 12. And he went home. He said, he saw his servant bouncing. Huh? He said, what happened? He said, at what time did he have? He said, 12. Kaya, yeah, yeah, it's the same time. <laughs> the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper. The translation said that it's sharper than surgeons. It can cut off cancer. It can cut off any disease. The word of God can neutralize HIV. The word of God, you see, you don't even need anybody to pray for you. What you need is to embrace this word of God. Meditate on it. The word of God can affect your body. Now, let me also tell you one of the ways the word of God can affect your body. You see, there are certain things that God asks us not to do and not to eat because of our, our health. Are you aware? You are aware? So when you know those things, they can also make you healthy. Let me tell you one of those things. The Bible says, envy is the rottenness of the bone. <laughs> Bitterness will dry you up. Worrying will finish you. And when you begin to meditate and begin to see those Read those word of God. You know that you divorce envy. Divorce. You, you just go home and say, today, I sack you. You know, there are some of you, you say, ah, I will never forgive. This one is till we get to heaven. You can't near heaven. You say, ah, this thing you did, ah, true to, you say, true to my heavenly father. If I, if I forgive you, eh, if I ever forgive you, you are finishing yourself. Can I tell you this? Time, God will help us to teach about forgiveness. You see, when you forgive people, you are not doing the person a favor. You are doing yourself a favor. <laughs> because the person you are carrying in, <laughs> can you imagine? Wait, how large is this your heart to carry somebody? You, you just carry people up. And, can you, do you know the load you are carrying? Your heart. This is your small heart. For, so for some people, they are carrying up to 100 people inside. <laughs> they say, ah, that one that did me that thing in 2013. <laughs> he say, ah, this one he did me in 1720. Hey, this one killed my great great. I will, I will. You put everything no wonder when you walk small, your heart is. <laughs> because the load you are carrying in your heart is finishing your body. You see, when wisdom talks to you, you better listen. You see the, the uselessness of envy and jealousy, of bitterness, of <laughs> worry, anxiety. And when the wisdom of God asks you not to eat some things, better do yourself the good of not eating them. But let me tell you this, as I try to tidy up. You know, this, this message is very vast. Now, let me tell you this. You know one thing about God is this. God doesn't just want to heal you. He wants to make you a healer. Or he has made you... Okay, let me put it in a better way. Eh? A higher revelation. Because God is not healing anybody. God has healed. <laughs> he 
He said, he took your infirmities. He took. Eh? I don't know English too much, but you can help me. He took. He took. What is he took? He did what? He took your infirmities. <laughs> what did they say? <laughs> he come out. Kai, that makes more <laughs> very good sense. <laughs> he come <laughs> or if we want to do it uh, pigeon King James pigeon English. He commotes your infirmities. That has anointing. Don't you think so? <laughs> he commotes your what? Your infirmities. So if he commotes your infirmities, where is your infirmity? Where is the infirmity? <laughs> if Jesus commotes your infirmities and he nailed, he died, he buried them, he nailed them on the cross, where is the infirmities? So when the enemy comes to try you, you look at it and say, he commotes. It has been commoted. So I, I, I don't know what you are doing here, but I am on my way to work because he commotes. <laughs> oh! The word of God can affect your body. It can make you live in health and vitality. You see, you can see why the devil doesn't want you to read the Bible. Why when you, when you start it, you, you do? <laughs> because he wants to afflict you. You can see when you carry your Bible, you do like this. Or you come to church, but when you are watching Telemundo, your eyes are shining. The devil is after your soul and your body. Why? <laughs> See, the devil wants to deal with you. But you must, because you must eat it. For it to get into hell. You, you can know, you can see what, what the devil is after. Because he said, they are alive. He said, my son, my son. This is, this is God. God loves us. He said, incline your words to my saints. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your He said, they are alive today that find them. Now, let's close now. Our time is up. Mark chapter 6. You see, I, Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. The Bible says, he said, you see, God doesn't just want you to be concerned about your health. God wants you to be the one doing what? Doing what? Healing others. They should, people should be sick on your, in your compound. Anyway, they call you. They say, Come and pray for this person. He said, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, verse 16. He that be there shall be saved. Okay, shall be damned. 17. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils. They will speak in new tongues. 18. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. It, it's, in, it's not praying for them. Just, just lay hands on the sick. It's revelation. You need to, we need to catch it. He <laughs> said you do what? You lay hands on the sick. And what will happen to the person? So you shouldn't be the one Sickling up and down. Because he commotes. So, and he has sent you to commot <laughs> sickness from other people. Can you bow down your heads? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh.
This message was brought to you by Doxalife Life Media. To enjoy more of the glory life, which is the God kind of life, join us at Doxa Life International Church, House of Mercy Auditorium, Uniagri Road, North Bank, Makodi, Benin State, on Wednesdays by 5 p.m. and on Sundays by 8 a.m. For more inquiries, you can reach us with the following numbers, 081-180-433-32 or 081-487-92013 or send a mail to us at doxalifechurch at gmail.com. Visit our Facebook page, Doxa Life International Church. God bless you.